So I guess it's fair to say that all is not exactly well in the Star Wars universe. Between the divisive, idiotic nightmare of The Last Jedi, the critical and financial disaster of Solo, the disappointing flop of Rise of Skywalker, and the civil war raging at Lucasfilm between people loyal to Kathleen Kennedy and people who actually want to make good Star Wars products, there's not a great deal to feel optimistic about. But there is one tiny ray of sunlight in this overwhelming sea of darkness and despair, and that sunlight is called The Mandalorian, a refreshingly simple and streamlined TV show set in the post-Empire Star Wars universe without the grand pretensions and aggressive social politics of the Disney movies. Yeah, it wasn't exactly groundbreaking storytelling, and some of the episodes definitely had the smell of filler about them, but when your expectations have sunk so low that they're basically underground at this point, sometimes even mediocre stories and moderately interesting characters are enough to count as a win. It's a bit like having a friend who regularly comes round to your house, drinks all your booze, pukes on your TV, and leaves a massive two flush mega shit in your kitchen sink. I'm sorry, Brian, I couldn't be arsed going upstairs. But on those rare occasions when all they do is engage you in moderately boring conversation, you feel like you're walking on air by comparison. The point I'm making here is that while there was nothing earth-shattering about The Mandalorian, it was a decent little show made by people who clearly liked and understood Star Wars, unlike some people we know. So it was generally good enough to get a thumbs up from most fans. Needless to say, expectations were riding high for season 2, and the other day we were finally given a trailer on which to gorge our minds and souls. So let's dive right in and see what we can learn together, shall we? The trailer kicks off, as Star Wars tends to do, with a long tracking shot in space, showing a planet off in the distance, and then Mando's ship appears to be heading towards it. But it looks like he might have seen some action recently, because the starboard engine looks kind of fucked up. And why is the exit ramp hanging open while the ship is out in space? I'm pretty sure that would be bad news for anyone inside. Anyway, for anyone that might be worried that Baby Yoda wouldn't be in Season 2, are you fucking kidding? That thing is a merchandiser's wet dream. Anyway, there he is, in his floating baby carriage alongside Mando. And it seems like once again, he's going to be the driving force behind this season, because Mando has to deliver him to safety once more. Hmm, this is all sounding very familiar. I can't say I'm exactly thrilled about the idea of retreading previous ground like this. Baby Yoda was a great addition to the first season, providing some much needed levity, but he was kind of a novelty card that you should only play sparingly. Leaning too heavily on his relationship with Mando runs the risk of stagnating the character and his development. Anyway, then important voiceover lady tells us the ancient legend of... An order of sorcerers called Jedi. You fucking what, mate? This show is set like five years after Return of the Jedi. Are you really telling me that the Jedi are now considered ancient legends that nobody knows about anymore? It's not like this is Lord of the Rings where Sauron's been gone for thousands of years. Why does everyone in this galaxy have a collective memory that's about as reliable as mine after three pints of vodka? The Jedi and the Republic they served are still literally part of living memory, especially a grown man like Mando. What are you doing to us, show? Nah, whatever. Then we get a shot of Sasha Banks from the WWE. Or Rosario Dawson if your eyes don't work and you're a fucking moron. Anyway, the trailer seems to imply that she is the Jedi he's looking for, so Mando has to deliver Baby Yoda to her. But can he trust her? Baby Yoda certainly doesn't seem to think so. Then we get to see Mando on a boat, which looks kinda cool but begs the rather obvious question, why? If you have a ship that's capable of atmospheric flight and can land anywhere, wouldn't a boat be ridiculously slow and inefficient by comparison? Ah, who cares. We also get some X-Wings and speeders because NOSTALGIA! Seriously though, it's cool to see them here and their presence makes a lot more sense in this context because it's only a few years after the fall of the Empire. It's also nice to see Carl Weathers and Gina Carano coming back again. I'm a big fan of both actors, especially Gina. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, it also looks like there's more Empire troops and resources being deployed than before, and it's interesting because I really like the idea that pockets of Imperial resistance were still active after the fall of the Empire. It makes sense that such a massive military machine wouldn't just crumble into dust the moment their senior leadership got killed. Maybe they're starting to reorganise and take advantage of the general chaos in the post-war galaxy to rise to power once again. I just hope they don't make some sad attempt to tie this into Snoke and the First Order and all the bullshit that comes with them. The first season of The Mandalorian was a success precisely because it distanced itself from the disastrous sequel trilogy, focusing instead on the largely unexplored no man's land between the old and the new series. Because, you know, world building is for pussies, I guess. Isn't that right, JJ? But the problem is that once things become successful, they tend to attract a lot of attention from all the wrong people. And when it comes to Star Wars, who could be more wrong than Kathleen Kennedy? I can only imagine how frustrating it must have been for her to know that a little TV show with a fraction of the budget that she's wasted over the years has already garnered more praise, goodwill and fan acceptance than every one of her shitty movies put together. Truly, no amounts of money in CGI can make up for talent and creative power passion for the source material. How's that trilogy coming along, Ryan? <laughs> but it does make me wonder if she'll try to muscle her way in and put her own unique stamp on the show before her contract finally expires and Disney can dispose of her like, well, like a massive two flush mega shit that someone left floating in your kitchen sink. The trailer at least seems to keep Mando's quiet confidence, air of mystery and general ass-kicking ability intact, so I guess there's still hope that The Mandalorian doesn't become another horrifying social justice fantasy project. Who knows, perhaps in some crazy alternate world, Disney are learning that stuff like that doesn't sell and never will no matter how hard they try to push it. Overall, I have to say I'm fairly pleased with this trailer and excited to see where they take the show this season. I like the concise, self-contained story that it tells. I like the stripped back, gritty, restrained vision for the Star Wars universe. And I like that it actually makes me interested in exploring more of this galaxy far, far away. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.